Why hello there anxious cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So a couple of things I've been getting asked recently and I decided to roll them into one because I thought some of you guys would probably know these so I figured maybe a tutorial would be better benefited to everyone with a couple of things introduced. So we're going to go with a full custom environment kind of thing in Minimator. And if that didn't explain it well enough, let's get into the tutorial. So the first thing is people want to know how to make custom skies. So without getting too technical right off the bat, let's go ahead and see if we can import something. So what I did is I downloaded the Black Plasma Studios uh, HDR skies pack. If you watched Arbiter's 617s, I, I always forget the number of sequence. Anyway, if you watched his tutorial, then uh, in one of the parts, I think it's like the second or third part, uh, of the new tutorial series where he goes over how to set up a scene. He mentions that they have a download. So I went and got that to use for this tutorial because it's really difficult it seems to find some good HDR skies. So as you can see I opened up the background tab here and you have these options right at the very tip top of that which is show sky and show custom image. And what we want is to show custom image. And when you do that not very much changes but you have this new option here image so I'm going to click this and then I have the option to browse and I'm going to click that and as you can see here the folder I have of the BPS environment textures comes up and I don't know what should we pick one of these I assume let's go ahead and pick uh, this one here it looks kind of cool so we'll go ahead and open that and there we go it's loaded in and we have the custom image however it doesn't look the best right now so if I look around you'll see that this actually sticks kind of with the camera that's definitely not what we want so what I'm gonna do is go over here and you have this image type and if I click that, you have Sky Fear and Sky Box. If I click on Sky Box, then it actually is exactly what it says. It's a box and you can actually have a mapped uh, image here that would map to this shape and whatnot. But that's not what we're going to do for this one because this is uh, something else. So we're going to go over here and go to Sky Sphere. And then you get exactly what you wanted. You can pan around and it actually is kind of mapped to the sky the way you would expect it to be and whatnot and of course the last thing you're probably going to do is turn off your clouds because uh you got some clouds right there they don't move so that's kind of unfortunate but it is something uh, another thing is depending on what your sky box is and whatnot you may have some issues with the fog so you can turn the fog off with the show fog option there or of course you can go to the custom fog color and maybe we'll try to match these up just a tad Something like that. If you if you wanted to, you know, like you can bring it in uh, or something a little bit. Something like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's something you can do or you can just turn it off entirely, which is probably what you want to do. Uh, something else to note is some of these, there's your seam right there where the image comes together. So you might want to be mindful of that if you have it in your scene. Try not to get that in any of your shots anyway. So one of the main issues you might run into, let me see if I can go ahead and pick another image here. Maybe we'll try this one. Let's go ahead and click on that one. And Arbiter already has these set up with the horizon kind of done for you. And you can see this one, the horizon is kind of uh, obvious here. You can see exactly like where this kind of straight line shows up. So typically, I don't know if you would want to use this if you're doing um like a flatlands style animation for whatever reason you can turn on the fog and kind of fix that a bit if you wanted to let's bring the height down so it kind of does that and we'll turn off custom color and you can kind of have that fix it a little bit i'm gonna go ahead and save um but what you would probably want to do is have some scenery and fortunately i have this ready to go so if i do this and i bring the camera around obviously you would want better scenery than this but you can know uh, you can kind of set up your camera angle such that the horizon isn't quite as obvious, especially if you had a better piece of scenery. This is just an example I brought in. Uh, but you could have like mountains or hills or something that would kind of cover up that horizon line for you and make it look all the better. So in continuing with our theme for the custom environment, another question I've been getting is how to do the floating leaves in your scene. So I've decided 
I roll that into this tutorial so hopefully that beginning explanation now makes some sense and what I've done is I already have let me oh you have Dan don't need that uh, I already have a leaf that I made in Photoshop if you can see it there it's just kind of a terrible little uh, leaf shape texture thing you can do anything you want and uh, if you don't know how to do custom 3d items and I have a tutorial on that I recommend you go check it out but basically what I did is just opened up an item and I set the image to leaf and I turned off use as sheet and so now I can use that as my particle so we're gonna use a particle system for this effect so I'm gonna go up here we're gonna go to particle and I'm gonna use the snow preset to give us kind of a good starting point hopefully all right so with that i'm going to go ahead and grab it and make sure our cursor is at the beginning because we don't want to make any unnecessary keyframes here and i'm going to raise it up i think for this scene uh we're going to bring it up let's actually zero it out here i don't know why it's not zeroed out there we go uh, i think we're going to want it to be probably at the very tip top of the trees maybe around 200 that seems okay. You don't want it to be too high, I wouldn't think. You could probably even go a little bit lower than this because the idea is that it's leaves blowing out of the trees. And if they're coming from above the trees, you know, naturally it doesn't normally rain leaves. So you want to kind of keep that in mind there. All right, so as you can see, we've basically got our, like, you know, default snow particles coming in. That's not what we want. So I'm going to go over here to the project properties and I'm gonna go to open editor with the particle creator highlighted or selected I'm gonna open editor and we have these defaults here and as you can see we have this box and if you need to expand it or shrink it or whatever you can adjust these parameters for this example we're just gonna leave it as default and it's gonna just you know put out those particles from that radius, that, that little area there. The bounding box is already set to ground. However, we do have a scene here, so we may want to bring that up. I can't talk today. Uh, so what we can do is bring it up to, what is it gonna be about 16? Because each block is 16 pixels. And I didn't mean to select that. All right, there we go. So now we've got the uh, ground fixed up there. Again, this will be dependent upon what your scene is and how high it is. And of course, you may have different levels, like the particles aren't going to collect on top of that stone or on top of the trees, unfortunately. But you can make it, you know, sort of interact with the most flat land area you have that you consider the ground in your scene. Depending on how high that is, you'll have to adjust this option. All right, so enough of that boringness. So we're gonna go ahead and click on snow because that is the current particle system that we're using. And we don't want any of this. This is using a particle sheet. What we wanna do is go over here to the kind and we're gonna click on this and it's already set to sprite. And I have that leaf object in my library, if you recall. All I did was have, it's not even in the scene, it's just in the library here with that texture set to it. So uh, let's go back to this. And what I'm going to do is instead of sprite, I'm going to click on leaf and boom, there you go. You got leaves and they're huge, way too big, and we don't want that. So we're going to come down here to the scale options. I'm going to set this to random because I don't want them to all be the same size all the time. And maybe we'll go one, like 0.1 and 0.25 uh, or something like that. It really depends on how big you want the leaves to be. These are pretty ginormous so we definitely don't want that though but uh, as you can see now the leaves that are falling are quite uh, smaller and gooder so we're happy with that so that's pretty much it you know you can just have them kind of coming in like that however you may want to increase the number or at least decrease the size so let's say if i decrease this to 700 by 700 and that should make the amount more dense within this range because there's less area for them to spawn into. Of course, I can't up this. I'm going to double it to 2000 and you'll see that we get quite a bit more dang old leaves. Uh, if you're not familiar with all this, I did a tutorial on basics of like how to use uh, the particle system and how to create custom particles. So again, recommend you check out that tutorial if some of this seems to be leaving you behind a little bit. Uh, but it's pretty simple. It's not too bad. Anyway, we're going to come down here. And what I want to do is, let's see, let's bring this down to 0.30. Let's see what that does for us. It may not be. I kind of want them to fall a little faster. They're not as light as snow, you know. So uh, 
gonna maybe adjust that initial Z there. Maybe it should be just negative 30. Maybe I messed that up. Yeah, all right. So there we go. And uh, I can always go up here and clear particles so we get a fresh start. And as you can see, they're falling a little bit heavier now. That's uh, pretty good. It's not too bad, maybe a little bit too fast though. Let's just go ahead and do uh, 25 on that. And they're bouncing quite a lot. I don't want that. So we're gonna come down here to the bottom and I'm gonna change the bounce factor to like 0 0.05, something like that. So you'll see they kind of stick, but they don't necessarily like get stuck or whatever. They kind of bounce a little bit. Uh, that may not be the ideal setting, but that's what I'm gonna leave it with for the sake of this tutorial. Another thing we can do is adjust the rotation here. Um, I haven't really figured out exactly what the best setting for this is, but you can adjust some of these settings here with the rotation and get different uh, rotating effects, of course, on the things there. So if I change this to 360, you'll see that uh, they're kind of going rather nuts. And I can bring that back to 180 and have them kind of chill out once again. I think, what was that by default? Negative 180, something like that. Anyway, yeah, there we go. Uh, so that's not too bad. You can kind of play with that and figure out what you want and whatnot. Let's go ahead and turn that off to zero. We don't want it to add any more rotation as it's going. All right, and another thing that we can do is instead of having them just kind of coming straight up and down, we can adjust this. So if I bring this up to say negative 40 on the Y, then we should get some movement in a single direction here. If you watch my custom particles tutorial, then that should make more sense to you how this stuff works and which direction they're going in and whatnot. But for now, we're just gonna kind of cover it very briefly. As you can see, they're coming out a little bit more of an angle, not just falling straight down. Um, if I go up ahead and change this one to negative 40, then you can see that we're getting some different movements here and whatnot. And you can obviously adjust some of these too. If I uh, bump that up to one, then you'll see that it actually is adding more force and sending them cascading across the sky there. We may not want that exactly. Uh, I can bump it up to maybe a decimal and have them kind of go uh, something like that, about 0.1. Still quite a lot uh, for some of these that are still falling. But uh, anyway, you can adjust all these and kind of have your leaves going however you want them to go. And falling into your scene and it looks like the, the trees are shedding and uh, you know it's like fall or something. Another thing you can do is if you don't have your texture set up exactly the way you want to I just make green leaves because typically they are green of course. Uh, I don't really know if you'll get the best effect out of this but you can change the color a bit I think if you uh, let's say if we wanted these to be kind of fall leaves or something ugh, something like that and uh, have them kind of change you'll see that they don't really inherit the color exactly the way you would want them to, um, but you can adjust the color even after you've created your texture and you can even have it be random and go from one color to another, but I don't really know how useful this would be unless you were doing some kind of scene where the leaves fall and die as they progress or something. But uh, as you can see here, we've got these kind of darker looking leaves if I can show them properly and stuff. So that's how you can do that. Uh, so I hope that was helpful, guys. I hope I didn't leave too much out. I kind of skimmed over some of this stuff. Once again, I have a tutorial that explains all this stuff uh, in a bit more depth. So if you want that, then feel free to check it out. But that's going to be it. There's your custom scene with your custom sky and your custom leaves and whatnot. And that's it. So I hope that was helpful, guys. I hope you learned something. If it was, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Become a citizen today. Share it with your friends, your family, and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video.